All right. So next up, we've got to talk about the upcoming Artemis mission. So Artemis 2, we we saw the reveal of the Artemis 2 crew, the, the first individuals to go to space, um, to the moon, to orbit the moon since the the end of the Apollo program. So this is a big thing. We've got the first person of color, we've got the first woman, and we've got the first non, non-U.S., so we have our first Canadian that's going to the moon for the first time to orbit and return home. Now, that mission is going to be huge. Uh, a lot of things need to continue being developed, including the next version of SLS and Orion, which is currently being prepped uh, at NASA. And what's really interesting is that Artemis 2 is going to have to demonstrate a lot of new technologies around the moon. And that's where this interesting... And that's where this really interesting idea of improving communications in space comes in and where our segment begins. So in order for the Orion crew to be able to return high-resolution images and video of the lunar surface back to Earth with a downlink uh, rate of up to 260 megabits per second, that is going to require the O2O system, which is infusing new laser communication technologies into the Artemis missions. They're empowering astronauts with more access to data than ever before. This is the O2O project manager, Steve Horowitz. And the higher the data rates, the more information our instruments can send home to Earth, and the more science our lunar explorers can perform. Now, NASA typically has done this with radio waves to communicate with with spacecraft to return data. And don't get me wrong, radio waves are uh, very good, and they've worked for us for you know over 50 years um, with the Apollo missions and before. But um, in order to really get high-def video, right, that, that we're looking for in, in a timely manner so that we can get as close as we can to following this live, and I think that's what a lot of folks are looking for. So... Really, this all started uh, back in December of 2021. NASA launched the Laser Communications Relay Demonstration, or LCRD, that went into orbit about 22,000 miles from Earth, and it was the first test of the two-way laser communication. It lasted for two years that they experimented with this, um, and they were able to see what the impacts of the atmosphere was from Earth on the laser signals, Um, And they were able to test what it was capable of. And then in 2022, they launched the Terabyte Infrared Delivery System, or T-Bird, and the tissue-sized box, uh, the tissue box-sized satellite, that's that's the right set of words, (laughs) provided 200 gigabit per second data download, downlinks, which is the highest optical rate apparently achieved by NASA. So... This new optical communication is going to allow them to do more science live, to retrieve more data at one time. You know, we, we see this a lot in, in our more recent times with the Mars missions where we see the large delay from that much larger distance. Um, but with this O2O, we're potentially going to be able to bring really high-speed data rates to space missions that we've just never seen before. We're only, we only just started getting super high-def images from the space station. Um, and, you know, I think that's going to improve a lot of spacecraft to Earth or Earth, you know, terrestrial body to orbit to spacecraft communications. If we're able to use these lasers to send more info in the same amount of stream, you know, light travels the distance it travels. So you might as well get more data in the amount of time that it takes for it to travel. So it's a little bit technical. But basically, Artemis 2 is going to be using lasers to bring us high-definition views of their mission and allow the NASA teams to communicate much more effectively with more info in the same amount of time. So very exciting times, a really cool technology that as we get closer to living in space and, and, and truly having people living on other planets and other bodies like the moon in outer space long term, this kind of laser-based technology is going to be huge 
for so many aspects of the lives of those people who will be doing it. So very cool stuff for Artemis 2. We'll see that demonstration literally in its application for our human beings that will be traveling around the moon for the first time since the end of the Apollo program. So very exciting stuff for the O2O technology lasers on Artemis 2. 